So today um, I'm going to talk about animation. So I've gone and created this flower sack, which was uh, kind of a historical reference to the way Disney did walk cycles in the um, beginning of their studio. Um, and it's you can go online and find lots and lots of uh, flower sack uh, reference walk cycles, which is what I've done. Um, See what happens with that. Nope. Walk. And you'll see all these images and references to flower sacks. Um, so what I've gone and done is downloaded that and I went and then did this animation where I've gone and mimicked these um, keyframes shown in this image in the background. Uh, and I kind of like it, but I, I want to talk about a different, or uh, how to translate uh, using the exact same character and model, um, how to translate an actual anthropomorphic, like a human walk cycle, and do something and make a different walk cycle. So um, I've got this uh, flower sack rigged. I just want to show you something about the rig. Um, so if we go and we do edit on the um, character, you'll see I've got these, he's sort of rigged like an anthropomorphic object with his legs out and kind of a sort of a T-pose. Um, so he's got um, hips, I've got this saddle um, bone to hold his belly in place and be able to shift it around. Um, he's got upper leg, lower leg, foot and toe, and then upper arm, lower arm, hand and finger, and then a head. Um, and what I don't really like about the way I've set this up, and this is something you can just change after the fact, is these shoulders um, are too buried within the model to really do um, what they need to do, they should go along the top of the arm or along the top of the ridge, and he really doesn't have a head. So what we can do to fix that is just select these bones in edit mode um, and go to the bone and its relations and just change this from spine um, to, to head. And nothing shifts, right, because I've got it disconnected. Uh, the same thing with the opposite. But then what we want to do is grab these two points and change the reference and shift that up. So now it's, it's going to be up closer to the um, top of the neck. And then the same thing with this um, elbow and shift it like that. And all that, and, you know, nothing should change, but um, then if you go to pose mode, and I've hid those bones in the pose, um, it doesn't change this particular animation. It, it'll change the shape of the way the deform works. So if we look at the animation now, there's a little weirdness where I'm moving the head. Um, I'm animating the head bone. So we can isolate that if we wanted to fix this. So let's select just that head bone now go into pose mode and you can see where um, the head animates so it'll be here in this position if we like the way that looks that's okay go to here where I'm kind of making him draw back still hmm. so the head uh, drew the head back and the arms sort of stay in place because of the IK so in some ways I could actually animate the arms here, but let's see what happens if I just shift the head forward like that. Yeah, it cleans up the bend a little bit. So then I can just hit S to reset those keys. There we go. Um, and then go to the next keyframe. And if I like the way it looks, So now with these shoulders attached, things are going to act a little different.
Let's see how that looks. So yeah, shoulders behave better now. And I kept pretty much the same walk cycle as far as the legs and body and just fixed what got broke. One way, another way to check here is if we turn off the armature, we can um, play. Yeah, that looks pretty good. All right, so let's go ahead and save that. And we will make a new walk, walk cycle uh, based on a different um, reference. So let's go and clean this up. We just save this. We'll save this as a new file. Flower sack um, and throw. Save that, and then based on that, we can go and just clear the um, keyframes on everything. Go into pose mode. Hmm, why is it? I'm in animation. Go out, maybe because I saved. Okay, there's all of our keyframes um, for the armature. Just take everything and delete. So we've lost all of our keys. Now if we want to start this from a reference instead of this pose that I've created here, which we want to do, go to pose mode. Yeah, pose mode. And select all the bones and clear transform all. So now he's in his default um, pose. And we can save that, so it's all cleared out. Now we need to find our reference for the walk that we want to do. So this that we, this uh, walk cycle that we had was really more of a um, um, sneak or kind of a hobble, I guess. So um, let's go ahead and just delete that image. And then I will go, and what I've got is I've got, um, if you go under your preferences and add-ons, if you look for import images planes, just toggle that add-on so that when you go to file import, uh, you'll get this image as planes option at the uh, bottom. And then from there, you can just go and find where you've saved your images. And I'll show these as a thumbnail so we can look. So I've got several. I've got this uh, sneak for a human, uh, some flower sack poses and walks, and a run cycle. So we'll look at this one as a reference. Um, just import it, pull it up, shift it back. Now it may be a little dark. Um, I'm just going to make it bigger. good maybe a little dark uh, when you pull it in here and you not you may not be able to see it easily so all we got to do is go to shading with that object selected here's our walk cycle and you notice that it's plugged into we don't really have an alpha so we don't need it um, but what we want is we want to plug this into um, emission perhaps it's going to wash it out, but if we add a uh, contrast, brightness and contrast, we can drop that in there and just crank up. Oh, I've also got, uh, you see how it's like blurring here? That's the bloom on the renderer. So let me just go turn that off so it's sharp. Um, we can turn off ambient occlusion too. So then we can crank the brightness down but keep the uh, contrast a little higher so that we can see and read this a little bit better. And then from there, you can just pump that back into uh, the color as well. To 
depending on your image, this is a JPEG. It may work pretty well. You may have to play around with just to get it readable. I think that's pretty good. Let's go back to animation. Yeah, we can at least read it. Okay. So this is your normal uh, references for a walk cycle. You start at contact where you've got the feet on the ground and spread. And notice in this case, um, this one's a little strange in that um, usually these reference the same side. So you've got this back arm and the back leg. Um, oh yeah, that's right. Um, what will happen is, is in a walk, you'll cross your arms in the opposite side to maintain balance. So in that sneak that I had, one of the things I didn't like about it is that his, his arms are kind of going forwards and backwards together. So in this one, this is your back arm, and it's forward, and the back leg is back. The forward arm is, or um, the arm facing us is back, and the forward leg is forward. So this is contact, and then you have... Um, down so that'll be uh, your foot is making contact here and then it's down and you plant it's kind of the most forward and you start pulling back from there and then uh, I'm not sure what this reference is even saying there um, but basically that's in mid stride uh, and then you've got a high point as you're bringing your foot where you'll extend and that's the most upward motion so your eye line goes and bounces there uh, so here it's down notice it's below like this is like at the head the head on contact and then you've got a down below the headline and then a little bit in the middle but centered and then above on the up so you're extending your foot and it just gives a bounce so we'll try to simulate that as well so the first thing we want to do uh, I'm going to can I hide my camera yeah because I can still just click in to get it uh, by going here um, so I've got a camera set up here so we can see it from the camera point of view and get our reference oh another thing we need to do with this image if we don't want to be able to have to render it or if we don't want to render it when we uh, go to render our frames is select the image go to um, visibility and just turn off show and renders so that way you can still see it in the viewport but it won't render all right let's make our first pose so um, to do that I usually start by just positioning the feet So select your object go into pose mode or your uh, armature go into pose mode and we will shift our foot forward put it on the ground I'm going to rotate it and give it a bit of an up. So notice that he's, his foot doesn't touch the ground there. It's not making contact. It's okay because we can drop his hips down to fix that. There we go. And then also, too, if we want to fix our knee position, we can, or the, um, action line which I'm kind of using these uh, seams in the side of the bag to uh, do we can shift our knees forward and backwards to kind of rotate so if we want to rotate it, it's like he's stepping forward we'll pull that up and then a little down um, okay so that's where he'd be making contact and then we'll take this back leg and shift it back and rotate it down and I'm going to just bend the foot Trying to get it to have a plan on the ground, like he's got here. Um, and in order to do that, I may have to play around with the, because uh, he was, you know, because I'm rigged this with the feet out, 
it's going to be a little tricky to get that downward plant. Notice the distortion here, but it'll happen so fast on the animation that it should be fine. I'm just playing around with different positions to see what I can get. That's probably good. And then we'll shift this forward. And we can grab the foot and pull it up. Maybe back. Just to get the extreme, we'll uh, rotate the foot a little bit down. Toe down. It's pretty good. So uh, one of the things um, you'll also want to do, and this may help us to get the position better, is right now his hips have stayed um, locked in forward position, but when you're spreading your legs like this, your hips will roll um, a little bit with the stride. So I'm basically rolling that. You can see how this um, belly bone basically shifts his belly that way, and we can fix that too. Just, this will help extend the legs and give a little bit more rotation. Um, since he's in stride here, his belly should probably be a little bit up, like he's coming down, because he would be from planning still. And then when he gets into the down position, his belly will flop. So now we, all we have to do is cross the arms. I'm trying to think if I want to rotate his body forward a little bit. Yeah, and his shoulder will be slightly the opposite direction, so make sure you're selecting the right angle to rotate. We'll pull this arm down. So one of the things I have too here is that the arm is rotating the uh, pivot bone. Let's go into Pose and check our constraints. This is our um, hand bone. Go back into modeling. So we're in edit there. Go back into Pose. Uh, I've got to turn on my um, I'll have to find the bones. Hold on a sec. What I'm trying to do is find the um, bones that I've hidden in the arm. So here's our head. We hit them under the head. Here's upper arm, lower arm, which has the... I'll just turn those two lower arms on. Actually, unhide and... Unhide. That way, uh, notice I had to click on a bone to get those um, from unhiding. Um, what I'll do then is here's where the IK um, sits. That's why I had to unhide them. So if I go and look at its IK, uh, I've got this rotation as well. I can just unhide that. Notice that it, that uh, made it snap back to the hand. And do the same on the opposite side. So that um, I can rotate the hands independently and not change the, and just use these pointers to rotate the arms or the elbows. I think that'll work better. All right, back to our animation. So, oh, let me hide these. Control H. Control H. All right, so now when I rotate the hand, notice that it behaves a little bit differently. That'll help me um, get the arm down into position that I want. So in this case, with that leg forward, I want this arm swinging back. 
and the hand will be slightly shifted that way. Actually, just a little bit, and then it'll shift more. Um, just trying to get it to, there we go. And then I can pull this down and back to create that uh, extension in the shoulder. I'm going to pull it back. Probably not too far back. We'll let it shift back a little bit. And that'll free me up to do a little more rotation. And then this arm can come forward. Pull the shoulder forward like that and down. because this is not like that, probably like that. See what the head does, forward, backward. Maybe rotate it a little bit more. Just checking the lines now. All right, so now if we take these two elbows, pull those back, and just play with the up and down to help with this uh, action line. I kind of want to smooth it out. So I'm just doing that. And perhaps this one needs to come further out and forward. Just checking it. Yeah, like that help around it and then the same with the knee so it'll be extending back so I'll raise that one come back with it a little bit and then this let's see I'll use that for the plants Let's see if the hip, I rotated it, now I may want to take it forward or backward. And we'll go with that for now. Uh, let me take this shoulder and bring it down a little bit. That arm's a little bit um, out there as well. There we go. And back. And then maybe this comes. There we go. Yeah. Just getting the uh, back to keep it out of the way. Let's put his chest out a little bit. All right. That. Looks pretty good for a first. Seems like a lot of work um, to get this initial pose, but that'll kind of everything else kind of builds off of it. Uh, one other thing, I've kept his whole body in line uh, since he's so fat and top heavy. With his belly shifting this way, we might want his sh uh, back to shift a little bit this way create a little bit of a curve in the uh, center of gravity line so he kind of stays balanced over it and that will also free up the arm a little bit to come a little bit further over this way. 
so that the um because he's kind of balanced on everything now but when we get to this stride and we off balance him and have him standing on one foot things may tilt more so like when he steps when he pulls this leg forward and goes up uh, this is going to shift even more this way in order to balance as he's swinging this leg back around. So, let me just check that stride. Yeah. That looks good. Alright, let's keyframe all of that. Select everything and just hit S. And that inserts keys. And in this case, it inserts keys on everything. Uh, location and scale everything uh, we can clean that up later but for now we'll just do that to make it easy to get through um, so there's the first keyframe and you might think the next keyframe that we do is this down keyframe but that doesn't make any sense what we want to do is in um, this one and then go to the middle one and copy this one and just flip it for that uh, the next one and I'll show you how that works um, so let's go to the uh, middle stride and to do that we can go out let's just go out 10 keyframes so I just shifted my playhead right here to frame 10 I'm going to go back up to the top because I want to be able to get access to this master key uh, then it'll shift everything in line. All right, so now with that, deselect on the bones, and we'll draw our foot back to the center line. And pull it up to the ground, shift it to the flat. Accidentally hit the wrong rotation there. There we go. So it's completely flat. Uh, let's shift it a little bit offline there. Okay. And with that, then we'll have this leg coming forward. But it won't be under him. It'll be a little bit out and up as he's lifting it off the ground. I'm just going to flip it out, get it fixed. that uh, yeah we'll fix the toe point it out a little bit more I'm just trying to get this thing kind of flopped out to the side like he's lifting it because his body's in the way his belly um, and we'll put it out now the question is how far out do we want it we don't really know yet so now I'm going to grab that hip and shift everything up so that we can have him um, reach his foot down to the ground. Shifting this back. Yeah, that looks good just getting a pose. Right now it looks like there's no way he'd be able to, I mean with momentum he might be able to hold this pose but we're going to shift everything a little bit more so he's balanced and as far as that goes we may want to shift the foot not that one, it's his knee the foot a little bit further in under his body yeah and that may help with getting him up off the ground even more okay and then when he goes up on his toe, we'll shift him even a little bit more. Now, he's brought this foot forward to the midway point and this foot back. And his hips, if you look at them, are a little bit rotated. So let's fix that. Body, belly forward. That's what I like about this belly bone is uh, it's really easy to... Um, create like wiggle and weight in a character with a fat uh, belly uh, or pretty much anything that would jiggle um, 
So then also because he took, he's, he strided uh, and he's lifted his body up, this belly should go down a little bit. Now, uh, to balance against this, we're going to shift his weight a little bit more off balance that way. And the arms will come to his side. Obviously not crunching him like that. And rotate. Probably want to flop it that way. Yeah. Have his hand out that way. Okay. And then this one. Uh, where's his hand bone? Come back. And up. Out as well. Hmm. Let's rotate it. Trying to get things positioned. I'm going to have to fix this. It's way out there now. And this is the other elbow pointer. And figure out where to put them. Yeah, it'll rotate his shoulder back. And then this one. Oops. That helps a lot. I can see where it's a little weird. Let's go up. There we go. Much better. Maybe. We'll scrub this in a sec and see how it works. Just trying to get that action line straightened out on the seam here. Okay. And is his head rotated? Probably. That helps. Then back. So I just had his. Uh, chest and forgot that I'd rotated those. There we go. Much better. Let's check the hand again. Go ahead and flop this so it's like he's still walking. I think that's our second key. Just double checking. All right, so we don't have any keyframes here. We got to make sure we select everything. Hit ask before and don't scrub your. <laughs> if you do in all of these changes and then you go and you shift that uh, key, it's going to go back to the previous key. So just hit S. Now we have our keys. Now we can scrub. And of course, things are going to sort of collide with the ground. It's not bad, actually. It's actually pretty good. Let's check the other side. All right, so yeah, that's where we're going to have to lift that foot off the ground uh, earlier on. And that'll be on the uh, down plant, like somewhere here. He'll have that foot in a different position. But uh, now, really all we have to do to get the next pose is to copy this key. 
um, so copy and I'm talking about this top key here this one notice that if you click on that it selects everything if you click on this one or these individually it'll select just as much as you've selected but once you get down below the armature each bone you can copy so you can copy individual keys but if you select this top one you copy everything just copy that come out here to 20 and then I want to paste key um, actually I could right click yeah, paste flipped It'd be shift control V you could paste if you just want to copy the same thing but paste flip will flip the positions so like you end up in the opposite position so um, Paste flipped will only work when you have your bones named with dot L and dot R, the bones that aren't in the center line. Just for reference. So we've got the shift. Yeah. So there's that. And let me go and add more keyframes. So down here on the um, dope sheet, if you go and you can click 50, and that'll just add more to the timeline because I'm spreading these out on 10 frames. Um, so the next thing I want to do is get back to the center line again. So we'll copy this key. Control C. Come out here to 30, and then hit right click, paste flipped. You can see how we're starting to piece this thing together. And then we'll end up on the uh, last key. So come here. Actually, am I on zero? Yeah, I gotta move this to zero because I don't wanna if I if I do it on one, um, when I go and I paste this at the end, uh, it will duplicate the key and I'll get a bit of a lag. So if I do it on zero, then um, it'll return on one. So I don't end up getting this, this key duplicated 100%. So let's copy that and then come out here to 40 and paste. And in this case, we don't want to paste flip. We want to paste that key because it's a repeat. So there's our walk cycle. So we'll see um, how that works. So let's go and set our end frame to 40. And then we'll just do a scrub to see how it looks. Oh, playing backwards. No. So it's okay. Um, I like the legs a lot, actually, and the arms. The the balance is okay. It kind of makes sense from that perspective, but the arms themselves are a little weird. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make them uh, on the downs. I'm going to make them kind of march up, and then we'll see what happens from that. So let's go back here to where we would want the downs to be. So this is our, now that we have our beginning, middle, and end times two, uh, because it comes to like here, there's the middle, there's the end, there's the middle, there's the end, okay? Um, and the end and the beginning overlap, so they count twice. Um, what we want to do is add our down position. So wherever that is, and let's just go ahead and add it in. In uh, probably it won't be equally spaced um, here, but um, we'll put it there for now, just to kind of evenly space it, and then we can shift it later. Um, so in this key, let's look at our down position. 
So we'd actually want to take our arm a little bit further back. And remember, um, oops, yeah. Go to this position. Don't shift your playhead after you've started setting these keys. There we go. I wanted it really up, like he's extending. And then also, too, we'll pull his arm a little bit further back. And then the same with this one forward. And then really rotate it so he's like swinging his arms up. And this can go up a little bit. Um, and we'll do a little bit more twist in his shoulder. Maybe not that, but here for a final swing. Um, and remember, this is the down position, so the belly should flop all the way down. Um, foot would be all the way down. And it wouldn't have slid, so we'll shift it forward. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, I'll show you. you. You'll you'll understand it a little bit better if we uh, explain it in a second. I'm going to hmm, do I shift this to, just to help it kind of come forward a little bit, maybe, and then this foot would be completely pointed like he's pushing off and remember this is also kind of the most down position so I'll pull him down a little bit more which will help me extend that foot pick it up and shift it forward just a tad um, the body might bend just a smidge. All right, let's go ahead and set all these keys um, and see what happens. Select everything, hit S. So that's our down from here. And I just want to like flip. Yeah, see how it's like out of it's got like a little bit, a little bit of an arm bounce. Uh, but I don't want it at five. I want it to be like at two. Because it'll be a little bit closer, kind of make, and then we can copy that. Here's our extension. And then right after the uh, opposite, we'll just hit paste flipped for its down. And then we can come back to here. Uh, I may have accidentally shifted this down position. It's at 37. Should be there. Yeah, because it'll be a repeat of this. All right. Let's see what happens now. So a lot's happening there at the end. I need to extend that. Let me like check the legs though. Yeah, maybe slower. Let's take this and shift it out to four. And this one will be out to four. That's better.
Maybe even five. Maybe five was right. Five, five. Maybe we need something. So that's swinging good. See how his arm. If we watch this part. If you watch him bring his arm here forward, it's like he's really extending it up and then down. And the same thing on the opposite side, except you can't see it because it's like there. Uh, but what's going on here is when he brings his arm back on the opposite side over here. So you see him bring his arm up and then down, and he's just bringing it across. And it's already back. There's no delay here. So basically I can just fix this by taking these arm down. I uh, kind of want them at the side so there's a little bit of a and those are fine on the opposite side. Let's just go ahead and key that for now. Uh, so hit S. That'll insert a key there. And then we can copy that key and paste it flipped here. Whoa. There we go. Let's see what happens. So he's bringing down. And then when it, it flips up, yeah, let's see what that. He needs a little bit of a hold at the top. So it's almost like you could just make him hold the pose on each on the extend. Let's see here. So here to here. And we will copy everything. Copy and paste. So notice when you get a uh, nothing changes, you just get these bars to let you know that there's nothing changing in those points. Here's that. So there's an extend and it holds. Maybe even shifts a little bit more, but not much. And it comes here to here and then here. There's our next hold. Go out one, paste, and then back. Let's see what happens there. Yeah, you notice how you can just create that little delay And it looks good on the arms and the legs. It's not bad. Um, let me hide the armature just to make sure. Yeah, maybe on that delay we just, the legs look fine, but the arms kind of look a little odd. So we just shift them a little bit, turn it back on, and find our keys. Right 
here. So shift that and this just a little bit down. And this one just a little. And then set those. On this key. And then here the same thing. Just straighten it and out. Keep hitting the wrong. There we go. Sometimes you'll click on these axes and they won't quite, uh, you'll accidentally grab it on a full toggle or full rotate. So we'll hit key those. Let's see what that does. Maybe we, it's such a subtle thing. Um, maybe we shift and select everything and then just grab these and shift them out one more. Seems like I've already done that. That's probably what was messed up right there. And then hit play. Yeah, it's looking good. And it's a start, but we can still do better uh, because what we're looking at here is um, bones animated on just keyframes and there's no curve changes. There's no curve editing going on. So if you look, what I mean by that is um, if we look at, we do a breakdown of all of this animation and we go, I can basically just uh, on any of these windows, I haven't showed this in class, but on any of these windows, um, you can go here where you get this plus, and then just pull out another editor, another window, in this case it'll be a copy, and then from there you can go and click up here on this, um, on your mode change, go to animation, and we'll pull up a graph editor. So here's our graphs. Um, and what we want to do is we want to look at these graphs. Let's just look at uh, trying to find one. Let's do something like the arm control. Um, deselect all of our bones. We'll just select those. And you can see um, we can shift this. If I hold down um, Alt, here, let me turn on my screen keys. And I'm going to hide this. Um, so I'm holding down Alt and then right mouse button to kind of scale and shift so that you can focus on these keys um, individually. And this is where cleaning this thing up, cleaning up the keys, because remember when I said we keyframed everything. Um, we basically um, pull this back. Uh, when we keyframed everything, we keyframed the scale and everything uh, movements as well. We really only want the movement and the rotation. So if we click on this uh, for each bone, let's just select them all again. You're going to have tons of bone selection so we can go through each bone individually if we want. Uh, for one thing, we have no keys on uh, this root bone right now. I mean we do, you see, um, but there's no, actually we don't, there's no, um, well we don't need any right now so we can just go and select all of these channels and lose those for the root. So if we just um, hit delete, chan clean channels, or uh, actually select those keys, 
delete the keys for that root and now there's nothing on the root so um, you can do the same for any of these and since we don't have any scales getting set on anything we can uh, delete the channels for scale uh, we've got rotation and location probably for that bone uh, we won't have any the only bones that will have any kind of uh, positional keyframes um, the location transform will be um, our uh, control bones and our pointer bones along with the bones that are actually in well those will just be rotation actually the um, well, maybe they won't if they're if they're offset. So basically, anything that's in an IK chain. So our toe, which is not in an IK chain, it's just rotation. We can lose the scale, and we can lose the location, and then just keep the rotation. So that helps clean up the curves a lot. It makes it easier to edit them. Um, our foot will have rotation. If we want to look at something, if we look at our animation and just kind of scrub through and we're looking at, like I can see where the foot uh, goes through the floor there. It's not that you notice it a lot, but uh, it probably means we can take um, that foot bone control and look at just its keyframes and shift them up. So that it doesn't go through the floor like there. Or its rotation. Probably put a bend in that keyframe there so we can literally, uh, if we wanted to keep this the same, Pull this up a little bit and rotate this. Like that. And then uh, take those two and key them. So we just added some scale. We can get rid of that. And here, because I had two bones. Okay. And then one of them, the um, this one, doesn't need any location. Unless it's empty. All right. Then when you slide, just check. Again here, so it's good there, but like right. Here. probably could pull that up. So there's a key there. I'm trying to figure out what this key is.
we'll just key that um, key transform or, uh, insert key and then on selected channels let's do all of these channels and select them that we just did that way we don't insert that scale so key insert on selected channels it'll just insert there there's that our foot stays above the ground yeah we said something about like making this foot lift on this frame when it's extending is that our push off Now there it is. So there, that's that little extension where we held it. So we might on that one just start lifting it a little bit. Shift forward. Uh, we'll go ahead and key on these selected channels. see what that looks like so he's lifting that may be weird let's just see what it looks like from further out sometimes you have to play this at speed to see it Looks good actually. It looks like he's picking his foot trying to flip it forward to get the momentum. We'll have to do the opposite on the opposite side. Alright. Um, so that means then here where we have this extension right there we just do the opposite so we'll copy um, yeah copy this key just these control C and then come back here to this one and select this guy and hit oops Pace flipped. I think and do just want to double check. Let's go ahead and flip this up. We'll do it manually. And then shift it up a little. And hit all the channels that we want to paste that into. We can lose the scale. Hit S and then I'll paste. I think shift S will only uh, do the, in the uh, inset channels. Alright, let's see. It's looking pretty good. Let's hide our armature. All right, so like what I'm trying to say about these curves is that if we select all of these, um, the curves, like our action lines, should probably flow. If they if they have some weird um, angle over here, when they go from one keyframe to another, 
then basically there uh, there's some weird easing on it it's going to cause it to look a little mechanical whereas if there's flow like if you were drawing an eye, a line from position of some finger on this hand through this curve it's going to have a pretty even flow it's not going to break in some weird uh, straight way or like kind of stay lined up so um, what you can do is just find something you don't like the way it's behaving so if in this case um, our arm and I will just shift this whole thing a little bit forward over here and then get this so we can position look at where we're looking at it key wise make it bigger there we go so basically um, because we've got that hold right here we may want to take this and give it a little bit of a bend like that to help with the flow same thing here not on that one this one create some flow in it um, this too might look a little weird um, kind of depends on the motion that you're looking at but editing these can help with uh, like this one it's going to be weird where it just sort of holds so go a little bit above this here that hold is going to be weird so it might go up and then down to create like an S curve this same thing S curve This one's a bit extreme, um, so I might go like that. And I'm just guessing here, like, I'm just going to go ahead and modify these curves to create better flow. Um, these sharp turns that it'll do, like on this green one. What is that? Y location. Um, so that's it's forward, backward. So there's an abrupt shift there that kind of makes that may make sense. Um, just looking at some of these others. Again, this one could be a bit of an S. So that's on that one. Let's do this one. Same thing. And this one's weird. I 
And all this is doing is changing the acceleration into the curve. So there's a bit of easing in a different way. So anyway, that's, um, there's obviously more tweaks we could do, but that's the gist of um, keyframing animation for basic walk cycles. Um, and really, that's all you need to do. Like this, he doesn't look, you know, he's not moving forward as he walks. That's something that we can key um, in addition on the root bone. And it would be like a, Actually, let's go ahead and do that. So let's show the armature. And by root bone, I mean this guy. So the idea is that you'd key this, uh, just its position. So um, let's go and key create the keyframes. Notice there's nothing on it, so if we just hit S, and we'll get rid of everything, rotation, and scale. Location, uh, we really only care about the Y. The Z, we definitely won't, so we can lose that. Because we're animating the hips separate, the root will just stay loose, or stay on the ground, flat. And the same on the X, so we'll delete that. So now we're just going to key this Y position, and the idea would be that um, we might make. Um, here's the way I like to do it. So we know where his foot's planted. So I'm going to go and add out of pose mode, go to object mode. I want to add a marker for his foot. So we'll create a cube. It's a little bit big. Scale it. And basically just make it small. It's like a line. The idea being that you want it to be at the back of his heel. So like let's say there's his heel. So when he plants his foot and moves forward the heel should stay locked to that cube. So let me hit R. Something like that. And I'm just going to go ahead and give it a different material so it's easy to see. There we go. Alright, so there's our marker. Then, if we go and select our root, as we slide from keyframe to keyframe, because we know that's where he's moving from, let's go to the uh, shift, the middle position, that key. That means that this whole thing should move 
forward to there. Okay. Um, you know, one other way you could be even more precise, and you may end up doing some uh, X editing as well, is that the foot won't, you don't want the foot to slip left and right either. So um, you could also put another marker, C, V, and just rotate this. Um, and make each one of these a color that represents that channel that, th that you're uh, using it to mark. So for this, it's going to be our X, it'll be the red, and then this one will make a new material, we'll delete that one on it, make a new one, and it'll be the Y. Um, so we'll go new, we'll make it green, since green is Y. And then that way we have markers that show where our uh, foot should stay locked to, okay? And what that means then is if we use that, select our this, go to that middle pass, we know exactly where to put the foot to make him not slip. Okay. So then that would be um, hit S, all channels, come back and clean it up, and then go to our next extended foot here, and put it where it needs to go. Something like that. We'll use that as a marker and then figure out the slip in a minute because we can always shift it. Hit S. Come to the next. So there's that where he had his foot planted. So now, from here, now we take our um, objects and shift them to the next foot because it's the one that's planted now, right? So, put it at the back, shift to the side, yeah, something like that, and then we mark it from this side. So I've got a key there. And then we go to where she's centered again, here. Keep shifting. And now he's back to this side. Hit S. And the final one. Pretty good. S, and we'll see what that looks like. A little slide there. That's the gap in the lift. So it just means I just need to take this keyframe. Or actually, I can fix it this way. When he doesn't, he's not pulling it back, so that's where he starts pulling it back. Just keep that there. He's a little bit there. Oops, I forgot to uh, set the key. So hit S. Notice 
press that he shifts. So from here, I need to shift that forward. Yes. There we go. And we'll come back here. Lost my key on the root here for some reason. It's all right, we can fix it. Undo. Somehow I lost these keys when I'd set them earlier, or I forgot to set them. That's what it was. Sorry, I deleted <laughs> the keys. So let's go and set this root. And there it was. It was acting like it was different. Weird. So we'll just undo. Shift those back to that position. Hmm. Well, we can reset it to zero. We'll just delete all of this. Delete channels. Location root, delete channel. Set that to zero, zero. position I just need to make sure in a sec all right so we'll select this go ahead and key it go to the next key right there's where he starts to pull so we'll key that and then go to Center, shift, that's S, let's go ahead and shift this one, oops, Then come to here. Yeah, just make sure that you're not shifting keyframes as well by shifting him. He'll step there. S S. We can move that to here. Um, actually, there we'll make that the key. And then it'll extend a little bit. You can see where his toe should be, right there. starts bringing that foot forward Go ahead and key that too then we shift to the opposite position the mark Now 
I do the same process in um, Unity as well. Then select our key. We've got a keyframe there. So if we shift, when does it start shifting in? There's the move right there. So hit S. the align middle hit S and then extend to there Let's check that. So this will end up being one. So let's check. Play. So my point here is that um, you don't actually need to animate um, this root motion to create those keys. Um, you can do like a nonlinear editor kind of repeat and then just insert animation on the um, root object using these keyframes or some offset. Some programs actually have kind of a non-slip type mechanism where you can measure out the stride length and um, it'll automatically uh, set it up. So really all you need isn't, let's go ahead and turn, turn that off. Uh, you don't need the um, position, the root position. Uh, you'll probably end up losing that when you transfer this into like a game engine or something anyway, or if we were gonna do this um, in uh, Blender, we could actually just go to the nonlinear animation editor um, and lose this uh, root motion object transforms. Hold on a sec. Yeah, delete those channels and keep the um, skeletal animation, which would be in the pose here, so I select everything, keep all of that, um, this is our armature action right now, so if we look at that, make sure that we are in, let's actually be um, dope sheet, and in dope sheet then you have access to the action editor. Um, while we're in this action editor, we can tweak the same way. But the thing is, you want to push it down to an action for the nonlinear editor. So we can say push down, clears it out. And then if we go to our nonlinear animation editor, here is our walk cycle as a track for the length. And if we want to have a repeated walk cycle, and do uh, animation position on the root. 
um, we can change our length of our animation to 200. Set this uh, nonlinear. If you click on the right and look at the um, armature action data or the animation data, there's this repeat. You can set that to five, and that'll make it repeat for the length of the animation here. So now he's got this repeat. And then what you can do is you can go and just make an entirely new animation in this editor without having to mess with the position of this uh, object on the um, walk cycle. You can make a new, get out of pose mode, make a new keyframe here, S, and let's just assume like I want him to walk a certain distance for those 200 frames. He's going to slide all over the place, but um, we can then shift his position like this. And uh, I'll just take a guess. And maybe want to slide it a little bit more. So right now, this itself has kind of an odd curve on the transform where it's doing some easing and stuff. Um, and we can come back for that. But what my point is, is that um, right now we're in the dope sheet. If we go to the action editor and we push this down, now we have that root motion track pushed down and layered on top of our walk cycle so that... Um, We didn't have to put the animation together. We have our separate walk cycle action, and we have our root motion action as well. It's not great. The root motion action isn't uh, set up the way we wanted. It's slipping all over the place, right? Um, and we can double click on this and come back into um, our animation action editor. We can double click and come back and keep editing it in that track. Um, just trying to find my position. Widgets. There it is. Um, Maybe he's going further, then hit the yes. So we set that, then we just double click again and come back out. You know, maybe uh, we'll have to alternate between this track. Uh, one of the things I like to do is I'll set up, like instead of having this render, I'll set um, this window to be the nonlinear, and then I can have my curves. graph editor right here and so when you see um, if we double click on this getting uh, to get to the um, dope sheet and the, to edit the action we can scale this and see that it's got this easing which he doesn't really need and we can fix his position in the walk that way it makes it walk better actually it works pretty good still slipping which means we can just take this and then move it further along now he's slipping the opposite way Not bad. So, um, you know, if we wanted, he's walking on the C, we can um, grab this entire curve, both of these points, 
we can lose the uh, the only thing that we're moving is the y location so we can lose the z and the x and then all of this just so we don't have to worry about the editing of that and then basically shift him back so that he walks across our camera view okay um, hopefully that's easy to understand and makes sense uh, there's a lot more to learn about this uh, nonlinear animation editor for one thing you can like stack actions and make them additive and subtractive and do things but it gets a little tricky that's why I didn't really cover it in this video um, really all you need for the animation is the um, uh, keyframing but uh, I just wanted you to know that like you don't have to make um, him walk across a floor because you can create the walk cycle independent of that and then go and create the root motion that makes him look like his feet aren't slipping of course they're, they're slipping here because I'm not being super careful on the walk but I can just go and add keyframes to this to make them hold position and things like that so that they don't slip and that's how you can get your walk cycle without having to embed a root motion in the um, pose itself so and then from there you can bake it out if you want um, for a game engine but really all you need for that game engine is that single loop uh, walk cycle okay so that's the basics of animation of a character uh, using the classic uh, flower sack for animation purposes uh, if you have any questions just post them in the comments